Good evening, everyone. Welcome to B-Dubs for the uh, Coach Al Holland Show. And here with Coach uh, Al Holland himself. Al, big game Saturday. It was a big one for us and uh, glad to be here tonight. And uh, it's, it's always a lot better to sit here and talk football after a big win on a, on a Saturday afternoon. I thought you off to a really good start. Uh, you really threw yeah. the ball well Saturday. We did. Uh, seemed like we was clicking on all cylinders. Uh, you know, next thing you know, uh, you know, just – Guys got into a rhythm offensively and big play after big play, tried to put them in some uh, tough situations, and uh, the guys went out there and executed and had a big day offensively. Yeah, I thought so. I thought I, I was looking back at the stats during halftime. I think <laughs> you, you, right around a minute five, might have been your longest drive of the half. I know. We, we looked at the time of possession, and uh, we was in there talking as an offensive staff there at halftime, and they was like, guys, we've only had the ball this long. and. It's like, yeah, I said, you know, it's been big play after big play. You know, we were trying to work a two-minute drill there to, to end the first half, and the next thing you know, it's three plays later, and it's a touchdown, and there went 30 seconds off the clock, you know, and next thing you know, they, they hit a few big plays and, and ended up getting a score as well. They, they get, turned around and worked their two-minute drill, and we came back there with, uh, with a few seconds left there at the end of the half, and uh, – uh, probably the only play that I wasn't happy with with Bowen Smith the whole day, but he had a heck of a day at the office he did. and uh, did a great job for us on uh, Saturday. Five touchdowns in the first half. And, uh, yep. Coach, I think we got some highlights of that first half if we're ready for those yet. Yeah. But uh, you got to say thanks to B-Dubs for being our sponsor there for tailgating with the Bears. I know our fans really li love that one. And here's early on to Alex Shelton, our freshman wide receiver, uh, from Hollywood, Florida, uh, continues to get better week in and week out. Bowen Smith uh, to Duke Ferguson, the turf monster jumps up and gets him right here, uh, and he starts to stumble. So they've gave him a hard time all week about this one, but uh, good job out here. d Les getting a nice block for Willie out here on the perimeter, and then Willie makes a nice play there um, and nice spin move to get into the end zone. Um, Heady play here by uh, Bowen Smith. We get him to draw him off sides and uh, get a jump ball down to D. Less down the field, and he gets him a touchdown. And when he gets in space, you know, with that big body, it, it makes it tough for those DBs. And, you know, uh, a big big play right here, interception here defensively, and the guys continuing to improve defensively. We've been proud of those guys and had a tough task, you know, having to defend the option this past weekend. It's, uh, you know, with some young guys out there, you know, really tried to harp on them about, uh, you know, assignment football, and, and they have to do their job. But, you know, a touchdown there by Bowen to, to Duke Ferguson. Here's another big run by Willie early in this ball game. Uh, thought the offensive line did a good job adjusting to some things that they did up front with some twists and movements and things uh, throughout the day. Uh, Trayvon with a, with a touchdown here. He squirts out the, out the front door, which I uh, give him a hard time about this one. It should have been a give to Willie, and that was Willie's touchdown he took away from him. So... Uh, Darius Gibson gets on on the books here with a the touchdown here in, in late in the first half and then uh, here was one uh, here in the second half and a heck of a block there by Dylan Wheatley to to set that up for uh, for Willie and Dylan had a nice run there early in the ball game uh, probably missed end up missing the highlights here but you know look at these guys flying around the football and and getting there and, and making plays. Uh, you know, we're, we're excited about getting our coaches out on the road this week. Uh, I know you've seen that, that that popped up there, and uh, each coach is sort of hitting a different area, trying to get to as many schools as we can in, in the next three days and uh, trying to see as many kids as we can. We won't get to every school we want to, but uh, we we got to sort of look at it uh, geographically and where we can get to and, and, and get to as many places as possible, get out and watch some of these kids on Friday night as well. A lot of people don't understand that recruiting goes on year-round. Anytime you get a break, yep. like this week, you got the break uh, with the off date, but you got to send right. guys everywhere. Oh, we do. And, you know, uh, we've got guys in Georgia. We'll be in South Carolina, Tennessee, all across the state of Kentucky here, southern Ohio. We'll get into Virginia and West Virginia a little bit. So, uh, and then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll follow back up again, you know, in late November and early December. Um, we'll get out there for a week and a half, two weeks to get to everywhere we need to. So, uh, you know, also, it's been big getting guys on campus for, for visits and game visits, and we've got two big visits still to come uh, later on this season. And with two night games, that even makes it nice for some of our kids that's traveling from distance. So, hey, it's a Friday night. Hey, we get home late, but now they can still sleep in and still be able to make it here to campus to, to see us and watch a game and see what we got to offer here at the University well, of Pikeville. That's, that's true. I thought the big thing about Saturday is – Got off to a great start early. Yep. 
You got to play a lot of guys, get a lot more experience out there. We did, week. and got to rotate some guys and, and mix and match and uh, look at some different lineups out there, whether it's offensive line, whether it's out on the perimeter with wide outs, um, you know, even in the backfield defensively, you know, with different fronts, with different backers, with different guys in the secondary. So, you know, those things are key for us as we continue to build. And, you know, we got a lot of young guys still taking a lot of reps. And uh, even though we're getting some guys healthy, it's starting to build some depth. And that's that's big for us as, as we're continuing to push through this Mid-South and uh, being 2-0 and in the conference now is the most important thing going into an off week. Tell you what, a big start uh, in conference play. Time yep. for us to take our first break, so we'll be right back on the Al Holland Show live from B-Dubs. And we're back here at B-Dubs on the Coach Al Holland Show. We're here with Coach uh, Eric Mobley, and I'm going to call you Mob. is <laughs> what I call you all the time. Uh, Mobley's been here for... Uh, Quite a while now. You went to four years here at UPI. Yes, yes, sir, I did that. I got my undergrad here. I ended up getting my master's degree. <laughs> um, as you can see, got the old line here today. Um, love my big old dudes. They take care of me up front. Uh, but I've been here for uh, probably 10, 12 years now, somewhere in there. Um, I actually played under <laughs> Coach Holland <laughs> and the gut gang behind us, you know, take care of us. Hey, you know, I, you know, I understand. I, I'm a former offensive lineman oh, myself. Yeah. You know, let's, we got to stick together. We got to get oh, glory do. wherever we can. You know, um, they're they're a good group. I've had a lot of them. A lot of them are juniors, and you know, I got a bunch of freshmen coming in. And, you know, I got a good senior in uh, Matthew Fields who takes the leadership of it. You know, getting him back from an injury um, two, three weeks ago, it's been real good for us having that leadership for us. Well, I know Saturday will be a big game for you. Able to get some of your offensive linemen in, oh, yeah. get some experience on some of the younger guys, and and I thought your offensive line did really well for you. Uh, we like it. You know how it is with offensive linemen. We're up and down, up and down. But the good thing about us, we bought in each other, and it doesn't matter if you're a fifth-year senior or a true freshman. They buy into it, and they're working together, and they're competing every single day and everything they do, and they want to learn more. Uh, so I try to, you know, give them the plate and let them take advantage of everything they get. You know. Of course, I know about a lot of things going on in your life uh, as we were pretty close. Yes. And uh, just got married. I did. I got married in May um, to Michelle Meeks, um, Michelle Mobley now. We were together. I um, actually met, here at, met her at the University of Pikeville. Uh, she was an athletic trainer here, and uh, we've known each other for a long time before I finally got to brave enough to, you know, pop the question, ask, me, ask her to marry me. I tell you, it's kind of infectious. Your your best friend, uh, Lamb, proposed <laughs> yeah. not long afterwards. Uh, Justin Lamb, him and I, we actually we played ball together. He finally just popped the question. What probably what three four months ago, yep. I'd say. Um, so you know, getting ready for his wedding. Hopefully, he's coming up soon. I know him and uh, his fiance have been working hard on that, um, especially with football season right now in season and things like that. I know you're getting ready to take a trip back to South Carolina. Yeah. Uh, on a recruiting trip, uh, what what are you? I guess you're looking for offensive linemen. Um, not really. I'm, I tell you, I'm looking for a center, just especially with losing Matthew. But I got a good young group. I, you know, you got West Knees. He's going to be an upcoming red shirt uh, sophomore. So I got a good young group coming in. Um, offensive line wise, I mean, we're a good solid group. Like I said, I don't really have one one senior. A uh, bunch of juniors and a bunch of freshmen. A couple sophomores sprinkled in there. Um, so I got a good young group and a lot of guys that. Um, I'm not going to lose for the next couple of years. It's good to build on and, you know, let them compete every single day. And I know you're going to give you a chance to go home and visit your family. I know that's important to yes. you. Um, yes, especially going home and seeing mom. Uh, Mom's been very big in my life. Uh, uh, a lot of people don't know my dad passed away July 2nd. Um, so it's been rough on me, and, you know, my guys have really taken care of me um, this year because, you know, especially when losing your father like that, um, it's, it's rough, especially yes, right yes. before the season. Um, they have taken care of me, and they've put me – on their back, and they they supported me in everything I've needed. So I've been happy with them, and you know, going to see my brother and my two um, nephews and my new niece. So it's, I'm really excited to get home and see the family. Um, they're gonna so it's gonna be a good, interesting get to go see some ball games too. So it's gonna be fun to get to see the family and get to go recruiting back home. You know, hopefully the weather will hold out. We were just talking about that. You know, big storm coming up through the Florida yeah. area, and you know, we'll back up into South mm -hmm. Carolina. So. Hopefully you'll get to see some games. I know you're looking yeah. for any kind of talent you can oh, find. Most definitely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're definitely looking some. Uh, South Carolina has some good talent uh, all around, defense-wise, offense-wise. Um, we got a great group from South Carolina. You know, we have a great uh, connection with a lot of schools down there. Um, so when back when I was a GA, Coach Holland and I really hit South Carolina hard, and we've actually made a bunch of connections down there. Um, so it's worked out really well for us. Well, you know, South Carolina has been an area that's been recruited 
heavily yeah. throughout the history of, of U Pike, which you know we both know as well. And uh, some of the things, I guess, like say the weight room. Talk a little bit about your weight program. Uh, the weight room. Uh, you know, I have a great, um, great guy. You know, Andrew Susie. He helps me out real well in the weight room. And him and I really push the tempo in the weight room. Um, there's no like we push it like we're on the football field. Everything is 100 miles an hour. Really focus on the squat and the power clean. You know, like I said, we're really working on that full body motion, explosive movement. Um, so we've been working hard in there. You know, even in the season right now, we work to get stronger. We're not working to contain. We're not working to just stay average. We work. Me and Coach Susie really push the tempo, really push the weight because we want to get stronger in the season. So even when we're in the off season, we're pushing the tempo even harder, pushing the weight even more. Um, there's just there's no being complacent in the weight room. That's where you get better at every day. Well, you know, in, in this type of an offense, uh, the offensive line has got to be very versatile. You've oh. got to pull. you got to have really good footwork as well as strength. Oh, most definitely. And, you know, like I said, we really work on jump. We jump rope, try to jump rope at least once a week. Um, we definitely hit the bags. Um, try to definitely get that footwork. But, you know, big thing is getting some movement. We, you know, we, yeah, we got big guys up front. And uh, Chase Richardson and Jalen Stone and all them, they do a great job. JP and Spears, they do a lot of good things for us. Um, the good thing about them is, like I said, they're very athletic as big offensive linemen. Well, Coach, uh, glad you stopped by, Mob, and uh, I'm sure I'll be seeing a lot <laughs> oh, more of you as time definitely. goes on. Hey, I appreciate it, Mr. Charles. So, Thank we'll, you, sir. We'll be right back on the Coach Al Holland Show. <laughs> And welcome back to the Al Holland Show live here at Buffalo Wild Wings. We're here with uh, Coach Trevor Hoskins. That's kind of funny for me to say because I remember when it was quarterback Trevor Hoskins. Yeah, glad, glad to be here. Trevor, you played here at uh, U Pike. Uh, matter of fact, most people may, may, some people may have heard your name. You hold about every passing record in the book. Yeah, we, we had a good career here. Um, obviously, uh, we put up some points and things and had a lot of fun. And, and, and now going into the coaching role, I really, you know, really enjoy it and, you know, I thought Bo was going to get you, going to tie you or tie your touchdown record the other day. Yeah, I thought he was too. I mean, he had five, I think, with 14 minutes yeah. left in the second quarter. So, uh, obviously, uh, I was I was rooting for him. I wanted it to happen, and uh, couldn't have happened to a better kid if you know that's the way it worked out. So, obviously, I, I'm right there rooting for him. Well, I know, I understand that completely. You know. He may actually have a record. I don't know if we've had five and one half before. Yeah, I, I don't think so, especially. I, I don't know five and five and a half, but I think it was about five and a, and a, and a quarter in just a couple minutes, yeah. I believe. So, yeah. yeah he really put it, you really looked good, Saturday. I thought that your offense really was uh, clicking on all cylinders. You know, it seemed like every call you guys made, there was an open, somebody open, and we were talking to Coach Holland earlier. I think your longest drive in the first half was like a minute five. Yeah. Yeah, we were. It was one of those games where where things were rolling for us. We were we were scoring quick. Uh, I think we looked at halftime. We had under 10 minutes time of possession, but but we racked up a ton of points. It was just one of those games where all 11 guys on the offense, offensive line was was really clicking up front. The running backs were playing well. Receivers making plays, and it just seemed like one of those games where everything was clicking on all cylinders for us. Well, obviously we know how familiar you are with the offense because you played in it, played for Coach Hall. He was offensive coordinator, I think, when you were here, wasn't he? Yep, offensive coordinator. Um, I've played with Coach Hall at Eastern Kentucky University um, in this offense or the basis of this offense. It's obviously grown a lot over the years, and uh, Coach has expanded on it. But, yeah, obviously been in this system um, or close to this system since 2007, coming out of high school. And, you know, you think about this system as kind of uh, – you got, and you, you're blessed to have actually two good quarterbacks playing for you right now. You've got the, uh, the drop back passer, and then you've got the, uh, the quarterback with the legs, too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, more than just those two, I, I feel com confident and comfortable with everybody in that quarterback room. Uh, you got you got a, an entire group right there that are, that are really good players and, and even better kids. They're a joy to coach. And, uh, you know, T and Bo are guys that's stepping up playing right now, but I, I truly feel confident with, with, with all five or six of those guys. Well, Trev, you know, with all we talked about, all the records and everything, and you're actually going to be honored this year. You're going to be coming into the uh, UPI Hall of Fame. Yeah, that, that's a, it's a really big honor for me. Very, very proud and humbled to, to, to be a part of that. You know, a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of great players in that Hall of Fame. And, uh, it, you know, University of Pikeville is special to me. Uh, this place is like home to me, so it really is a big honor for me to be able to do that. Actually, a lot of people don't know, but you actually went home and coached high school for a couple of years right after you left here, and then uh, when Coach Holland called, it didn't take you long to decide to come back, did it? No, no, I, I enjoyed uh, you know, I enjoyed being an offensive coordinator at Middlesbrough. It was a really good experience for me. Grew up a lot as a coach, you know, during those two years, uh, you know, 
running your own side of the ball, having to call plays uh, for the first time, and uh, doing it at the high school level was something that was, was a big learning experience for me. But, uh, you know, my love was at the college game, and I was excited to be able to come back. You know, we'll talk, I'm going to talk a little bit. I, I remember one game in particular we'll talk about. Remember the game at Faulkner when you had to come back from behind and were throwing it all over the field? Yep, I remember that game. I remember that game well. That was one uh, that was a really interesting night. I know it looked like, looked like we were in trouble, and then all of a sudden, much like it did in the first half Saturday, your offense started clicking, and, man, you people put up a bunch of yards in that second half. Yeah, just one of those games where things kind of started out slow for us and, you know, just kept plugging away and, and, and sticking with it, and all of a sudden things started rolling. Uh, one of my most memorable games here. I yeah, enjoyed that. I know we, we were looking at those uh, records because, you know, obviously when Bo approaching that record, we started looking and said, said you've got the you got six touchdowns, I think, twice in your career and five maybe twice. So I think he's tied for you with you for third place. Well, technically, I guess since he's the youngest in that group, he will be considered in third place. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like I said, I was, uh, I, I was right there rooting for him. I was up in the box and obviously happy with the way we started as an offense. But, you know, once, once you know, people started mentioning, I was like, you know, there's not, you know, I was hoping that he would get it because it really couldn't have happened to a better person. I know we, you know, of course, you know, you change up a little bit in the second half. You really wouldn't, you all weren't worried. You were worried about winning the game and not breaking records. So it just happened that he didn't get anything in the second half. Yeah, it was one of those things to where, I, you know, I think, I think back then when we broke those records, it was a lot of back and forth and, you know, a lot of close and tight ball games. This is one of those situations where we had a pretty good lead. The running backs were running the ball well and hit some big runs. And it was just one of those things to where it started out fast and he got a lot. And then in the second half, you know, other things happened, and that's just part of it. Yeah, you know, we were in several shootouts back when you were playing. That's, that, is, that is true, you know, and those kind of games are when you sit up with those kind of big numbers. Yeah, yeah, those the, the, a lot of shootouts. Uh, fun to play in, but I'm sure, you know, looking at it now as a coach, you know, you'd much rather coaching the ones like we did Saturday or some, you know, some, some more of those games. But as a player, they were fun to play in. I appreciate you talking with me, and uh, good luck on the rest of the season. Absolutely. Thank you very much. We'll be right back on the Coach Al Holland Show. And welcome back to B-Dubs here on the Coach Al Holland Show. And now let's talk a little bit about what happens in an off week because this is yeah. your uh, bye week. It's a little bit different for us, and uh, this probably I think it's the first time in, uh, since I've been here that our fall break with the school has sort of worked out the same time as it being our off week, which typically we would give our guys the Friday, Saturday off, and we'd be off Monday and practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But with us having fall break Thursday and Friday, uh, we figured we'd let uh, the kids take advantage of it as well, too. So, uh, you know, practicing at uh, 5.50 a.m. in the mornings and uh, – and that way they can get to class and uh, bright and early. So we'll practice Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday this week in the morning time, uh, lifting weights on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, but that gave them the evenings to sort of work on some group projects, to do some do some things like that, and, and to get caught up in the classroom from missing class maybe on a Friday. Then they may still have an assignment out or something like that. Uh, so it's been good for the kids. The kids have really enjoyed it, uh, to have that extra time and, and – uh, and really trying to get healed up as well and get those guys in the training room, get some extra treatment and those type things. So uh, really working some different scenarios during practice and, and things. So we're, we're prepared coming down the stretch, but it's also been good for us to be able to evaluate some of the guys that maybe not taking as many reps on Saturdays. And we have some of those live periods, and it's been big for us. And in the development of guys, you know, they get, kids 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year olds, they get caught up in the moment right then, you know, so much of, hey, I want, you know, why am I not getting so many yards per carry? Why am I not getting so many balls thrown to me? Why am I not getting so many reps on Saturday? And, uh, you know, a prime example is a, a young man like Jalen Stone, offensive lineman. It's been, you know, very proud of him. He's a guy that took advantage of an off week whenever we, whenever he redshirted his freshman year. You know, we do some futures on futures and live reps and things like that, and you just see the development of him and taking it to a new level and then now look at him as I think he's probably going to be a, probably a, uh, more than likely a, an all-conference type guy, and uh, he would get my vote. And, you know, so these guys have to understand that, and, and we're continuing to try to develop these young men uh, all the way across the board, and not only trying to win ball games on Saturday, but looking for the future of this program as well, and each and every one of these individuals too. 
Well, speaking of individuals, this gives you more individual time with some of these kids, too. Oh, yes, it does. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's a heck of an opportunity for some of these guys, you know, to be able to spend that one-on-one -on -one time with them. Uh, we've also had extra some guys down in the facility getting extra time in, in and, and extra drill work with their position coach, too. So, you know, you, you see it. They're, they're chomping at the bit. They're hungry. You know, they're not satisfied with where we are. We're a long way away from our goals and where we want to be. And, and to be consistently week in and week out. But, you know, it's, it's a work in progress, and, and we got great young men and, uh, you know, the right young men that, that want to do it the right way. Well, also, this fall break, give these kids right. this weekend off, gives you and your other coaches a chance to get out and search for new talent. Oh, yeah, it does, and, and it's big for us as a staff. You know, we try to get out during our off week, but now with, with it hitting this way, now we can get coaches out a day early, and now we're out all day Wednesday after, after we come out of a – a 6 a.m. practice, you know, the guys shower and we're on the road and we can get to as many schools as we can, watch some people practice Wednesday night. Thursday, you know, we're in as many schools in and out as we can um, and then watching a couple practices that evening. And then Friday we're in schools and then trying to get to some games because, hey, you know, it makes it tough for you, you know, trying to, we, we try to watch some games at distance now because, you know, we get a lot get to watch a lot of these local games or within an hour from us. But, you know, outside of that, it makes it tough for us, you know, because we don't have that helicopter to hop in and to be there on the 50-yard line when they kick off on a, on a Friday night and to be back and ready to go uh, because, you know, we got obligations here as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's great for our staff to get out to evaluate some kids, some guys we've seen on film and we've got early evaluations on follow up with guys that we may be seen during the springtime when we went through for spring recruiting or had in camp this summer. So uh, big evaluation time for us. You know, new film, guys have grown, got stronger and bigger, and, you know, uh, you know, we want to see those improvements, and that way we can bring film back to get evaluated uh, as we start to narrow this thing down uh, as we're trying to look for the right guys going into the recruiting process. I know you all do a lot of recruiting in-state. I know yeah. you, Coach Lamb, I, I'm assuming – uh, you know, Coach, uh, you're, you're going to stay here close to yeah, home probably. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, you got Coach Lamont's in the state of Kentucky. Coach Hoskins in the state of Kentucky. Uh, Coach Anderson's in the state of Kentucky. Coach Mobley is. Coach Susie, you know, almost everybody on our staff has a, has a piece of Kentucky, you know, because, hey, uh, we're going to start here in the state and we're going to work our way out. And, I, you know, I would probably be safe to say that we play more Kentucky kids than any other team in the state. And that goes for the big boys too, you know, and uh, – uh, we've got a lot of locally grown kids, you know. I mean, you look at Braxton Whitmore, you know, an hour down the road from, from Perry County Central, you know, been a first-team all-conference tight end. You know, X Willis from, from Belfry, you know what I mean, that, that's been here. You know, we just graduated and, and, and is on staff. You know, Sonny Warren, you know, from right here in Belfry. So, you know, we, we've got guys that's been right here in, in the state and, and other parts of the state that, that's big for us. Um, and, you know, we, we want to start here. We work our way out um, and give these guys the opportunity. But, we're looking for the right young men, you know, and, and that's the number one key is finding the guys that want to get it done academically, that want to get it done, you know, in the classroom on a week-to-week -week basis, and then, hey, performance-wise, it's, it's going to fit the mold of what we're looking for. We want to find guys with great practice habits that want to come and bring it day in and day out uh, because it is a competition in practice. It's not just on Saturday when the lights come on. It, it's that Monday through Friday, you know, what are you getting done then? You know, are you a guy that we can rely on? It's going to be in study hall. It's going to be in weights on time. It's going to be a leader for this team. And, hey, when your number's called, you're going to be ready for it. And, and it's tough for, for young kids to understand, but, uh, you know, we're trying to find all those intangibles in, in each and every kid that we find. And we got high standards for these guys, uh, but we'll, we'll continue to, to, to find the right ones. Well, Coach, looks like we've come to the end of our time today. You know, of course, off week, yep. and we'll come back next week and talk about your next opponent, Union. Yep, and that'll be a big one for homecoming. So we'll have a lot to talk about, and we'll be looking forward to that one. But we sure appreciate you guys, uh, Charlie, and, and thanks to B-Dubs for everything that they do for us. So for Coach Al Holland, this is Charlie Pinson. We'll see you next week on the Coach Al Holland Show.